Do you struggle with being a new online entrepreneur? Do you sometimes feel lost and alone in your journey? Or maybe you need some tips and inspiration in how you can market and sell online. Join Valerie Fisher in her weekly show, Change Makers, where she talks to other new online entrepreneurs about how they found the courage to build their brand. The show hopes to inspire other new business owners with stories of our guests' experiences. Also, watch out for solo recordings with our host where she does many trainings of her brain science selling method. Each episode contains powerful information to help you grow your online business, help you with your social media, and build a respected brand. Changemakers, a show by and for online business owners. Hello everybody and welcome to Changemakers, your show for new online business owners looking for inspiration and courage as they begin their entrepreneurial journey. On this show, we have solo episodes where yours truly, Valerie Fisher will discuss neuro-linguistic programming, sales and marketing, and business tips. Majority of the show will have guests who will share stories of their own journey and whose products and services also hope to serve new online business owners like you, our listeners and viewers. I'm excited for this episode, so let's get the ball rolling. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. We are here again with Changemakers with Valerie Fisher. And today we have a very special guest, a different kind of entrepreneur, Mr. Francis Errol Medina. Magandang umaga sa yo. It's good morning where you are right now. Uh, Francis is Good in- morning. Good morning. Thank you, Valerie, for this wonderful opportunity. And it's an honor to be a uh, um, to be guested here as a change maker. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for agreeing to be uh, one of my guests. So I usually ask is Oprah. I, I actually love Oprah and I follow her. I follow kind of her outline. She always asks her guests, what is spirituality to you? So the thing that I always ask my guests is that what changed in, in your life or in this world? What did you want? that inspired you to start or begin your business? What's, what was it like for you, Francis? Well, um, the, the more that I've been learning about uh, financial literacy, the retirement, and, and being an, an expat, you know, um, commonality to, to, to the expat is, at the end, especially kung hindi ka magmamigrate, at the end of the day, we're going back home. You know, and and started 17 years back. And my goal is that to come back home more sustainable than I left the Philippines. And that's my fear. You know, how am I going to be able to be to sustain not only to this generation, but the next generation? Mm-hmm. That's 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 my that's my anyway, uh, that's my goal to to provide to that to the, this generation and to the next generation. And and to me, uh, I know. I mean, going out the um, our comfort zone, it's it's uh, it's very difficult. And um, us being an expat, there's a longevity only. Meron yung tanging na uuwit uuwi ka. So um, nagjajana nagcarly ako dante while I'm working to to earn additional cash flow. And um, don don na nagumpisa uh, when I've met um, people. Uh, mentors, I would say, na kaya ko rin gawin yan. And I would like to do that. And, and I would like to try and challenge my uh, status quo. Never settle for less. And unleash my full potential that I can do that. You know, so doon, from corporate, uh, of course, um, lagi nga natin sinasabi, um, the very essence of becoming a Mr. Expat or Expat Entrepreneur is that our 9 to 5, our job, you know, will pay the bills. But whatever you do on your 6 to 10 will help you build your empire or reach your dreams. And that's, yun yung una talagang tumatak sa akin. Uh, ano ba, magpapahinga na ba ako after 6 o'clock? <laughs> um, baka kaya ko pang may gawin pa eh. Diba? After my my income, you know, yung magbabayad ng bills ko. So doon, the, the hunger... Um, and at the same time of learning and challenging myself, 
nag-start doon. Kaya na-brand tayong Mr. Expat Entrepreneur. And More Mr. Expat Entrepreneur. Can you tell us, what was your very first business? It can be a side hustle. It can be an official business. What was well, it that really started you? Well, it's a side hustle. You know, it's always a side hustle. Sabi ko nga, nag-umpisa ako mag-car lift. Yung parang hindi pa uso si Uber nun. Project manager ako sa Qatar that time. And nagta-taxi driver ako sa, uh, sa gabi. Ay, wow! You know, yeah, that's, that's uh, I mean, on, a, on my car, on a private yes. car. So, so that's what I do. And then from doon, sabi ko, oh, pwede pa lang ako kumita pa rito ng additional income. And then, gumagawa ako ng mga racket. <laughs> Mahilig ako dyan, racketero rin ako. Um, gumagawa ako ng mga website or other systems sa ibang kumpanya on my on my 6 to 10. Di ba? So hanggat, hanggat kaya, uh, hanggat legal, you know, uh, at ma- makakatulong sa pag-add sa cash flow, I do it. Uh, basta kaya ko. Then from doon, sabi ko, ano pa bang pwede kong gawin? Ano pa bang pwede kong gawin? <laughs> basta kaya ng oras ko at wala akong nilalabag na kontrata sa aking kumpanya. And then, yun, um, doon sa kagutuman ko na makapaghanap pa ng other items, I mean, other other businesses, I met individuals who are successful already. Mm-hmm. Uh, na sabi ko, I know you're busy. You're successful already with your business or with your uh, employment, you know. And mm-hmm. still yet, you open businesses, you open restaurants. So there, nagkaroon ako ng aha moment. I can do that as well. True. Then collaborate with successful people. Yes. Diba? That's my, ano eh, diba? So, um, enable for you to find must speed up find a mentor na tutulong sa iyo uh, successful people that nadaanan na nila yung mga obstacle so para may shortcut ka na so collaborate with them yes i i then, I, yeah, i agree then doon na nagkumpisa naman yung yung restaurant businesses while i'm working as a uh, um uh, management team responsible for 79 countries so sabi ko uy kaya pa <laughs> pwede pa pala and then ang 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 clear goal lang doon is that sinasagot ko lagi yung problema ko yung pain points ko ang pain points ko is that um ko nasa Manila yung business ko may hirapan na akong mag mag uh, uh, magmanage right mm-hmm. and gusto ko hindi lang isang restaurant Mm-hmm. So, ko, multiple of restaurants. So, bago ko tinayo yun, so, um, as a strategist, alam mo naman, um, I put up first the management company who will take care of those businesses mm-hmm. before I put up the first restaurant. Kasi my goal is not to put one restaurant, but I want to put multiple of those. Yeah, so you actually created a roadmap. You plan yes. for it even even before you started it. It's very interesting when you said um, find a mentor. Just this morning, I posted something about some about um, a video that I saw by Sharon Lecter. She's a she's also a actually real estate um, coach. She's a real estate coach in the in the in the U.S. And she said the three things um, that are common to highly successful people are. Um, the why not attitude, why not? Like what you said, you know, why not? <laughs> it's my car. I can drive it after office. And then the second one is taking action. You always do. <laughs> what else is there to do? You always find something. And the third is the power of association. It is important what, what and who you surround yourself with. So it's just so pasok <laughs> when, when, when you said, find a mentor. I'm glad that you also um, a believer. You're also a believer of that. What are your um, sorry, we're cut. Yeah, okay, we're back. Um, what have been your biggest struggles in this journey? Ah, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> How to weigh that as a biggest struggle? Because biggest struggle, well, there's a lot of uh, struggles in the making, you know. Um, um, lagging in as why not? <laughs> um, there's a lot. I mean, from people, structure, um, managing it virtually also. Um, and from time to time, you need to fly also there. Ha, medyo mahirap yung tanong na yun, ha? Biggest struggle. Sa dami. Sa dami. 
Oh well, well you know, with 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 the pandemic, it's really really tough to to pivot. Um, I think that's that's where the biggest struggle I would say um, to pivot, especially on a brick and mortar business. Mm. One, this is one of one, one of my business. So that's my that's a struggle of uh, nobody nobody forecasted this. Nobody uh, no playbook is ready for this. I would say even in the government. And, and how fast you will react at the same time to have top decision is, uh, is, going, is the biggest challenge. That's you know? true. Um, at the same time, you, you do have people na umaasa dun sa business. At the same time, you do have also shareholders that is also uh, not understanding to, to a certain extent um, the difficulties of the day-to-day So trying to survive the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think nobody is really um, ready for that. You know, um, no playbook, uh, a great playbook <laughs> will, will prostitution <laughs> yourself to this. I think that's, that's the biggest at the moment uh, that I would say. However, like, like um, you know, so why not? You know that um, to a certain extent that the, the, the pandemic also brought opportunities. Mm-hmm. and possibilities you know we just need to to find that um, that light at the end of the tunnel and work through with it uh, you know so yeah uh, you have so many businesses francis can you tell us about some of them or your flagship the ones that are really close to your heart what are those well, I do, so far from well, we do have member of um, mercato right with edgar and rj yes, <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I mean, uh, it, it all started, you know, it's, this is the service management who's taking care of um, most of the business in the Philippines. That's one. And I do have consultancy and events management here in the UAE um, where I, I used uh, my corporate experience in helping organizations, small, big organization here in Dubai. And the UAE, or in the Middle East, I would say, to um, now uh, to transition, <laughs> to help them strategize, to help them form the planning, what they're going to do, especially now. I mean, kala ko nga, uh, matitigil na yung consultancy na yan. Eh. Ngayon pala, mas marami silang kailangan na uh, outside voice mm-hmm. to help their organization to pivot. Mm-hmm. So that's that's one. The, these are the two main. And then from there, um, nakilala, I mean, nakilala tayo, nagkakil, nakilala ko rin yung sila RJ uh, mm-hmm. with, with those businesses and Edgar that we help transition our um, our collaboration and uh, collaboration of uh, the Mercato United Kitchen. Ayan. So, uh, the Mercato, tell us about the Mercato United Kitchen. A little bit. So, that's okay. the Philippines. I tried ordering this morning, but I got <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, the Mercato United Kitchen, it's a, uh, it's a pivot of our food hall. We're supposed to put up a food hall, a 400 plus square meters food hall um, uh, in uh, BGC. Mm, neighbor. Fortunately, yeah, fortunately and unfortunately, unfortunately, pandemic happened. Fortunately, mm-hmm. hindi pa namin sila, na, halos mag-uumpisa na kami ng construction when, when, uh, when COVID breaks. Of course, uh, kilala mo naman kami with RJ and, uh, and Edgar, hindi kami papatingin kay COVID. <laughs> So we, we need to find the, uh, a way of how are we going to transition this mis- business model. So sabi namin, so it, it took us how many months of, um, you know, the combined effort of FJ Prime, the Mercato Group, and Capera Group. Lahat, all those three uh, com- combined to this uh, 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 brainchild. So it's, it's a hybrid, I would say, cloud kitchen. But um, there's a advocacy you know, uh, beyond it, you know, helping MSMEs, vendors to have a a home where they can cater their uh, 
uh, businesses na para ma-reach pa nila even on the time of pandemic. Kasi dumami yan eh. Dumami yung nagluluto sa bahay, nagbibig yes. sa bahay, kumagawa ng... So, we would like to give an opportunity, a venue for them to widen their scope. Mm-hmm. To be in the mainstream. So, doon na. Doon na, na, na nag-transition from the food hall. Then we we have the Mercato United Kitchen. And we opened that in last August uh, five. Yes, it's a, a few months a, a few months old. Um, I wanted to go, but the I received a message because I, I I messaged them on Facebook and they said you know some of the kitchens are closed because of MECQ. So I'll try again. <laughs> I'll try again in the GTQ <laughs> when things are more, you know more open. Um, it's very interesting because you are an expat and then you're also an entrepreneur and you have businesses here in the Philippines. Do you think other other expats like you? I mean, what do you advise to other expats like you? Can they also do the same? How is it managing a business here in the Philippines while being there? Well, like like what they said, I mean, um, the business model first is there. I mean, my problem, answer always a pain point, di ba? In any business, you need to answer a pain point. Yan ang lagi sinasabi ng RJ. You need to, to give a solution to a problem. My problem as an entrepreneur or expat entrepreneur kasi nasa corporate pa ako that time eh. uh-huh. my challenge is that I cannot devote my 100% because I, my main income source is still becoming uh, our, uh, as an employee mm-hmm. corporate uh, nasa corporate pa tayo noon so I said I need to establish first a service management mm-hmm. you need to have that structure enable for you na kahit mo man, kaya mo manage even you're not 100% there. Mm-hmm. Of course, people that you trust needs to be in, embedded to that structure also. Yes. And you need to put KPIs as well na um, lahat ng loopholes eh walang uh, wala, uh, walang mangyayari. Kung pa parang even your remote you know that it's going to work so i i incorporated my my corporate knowledge also on that structure so kailangan mo ng pag-aralan kaya eh madali naman eh i mean as long as you execute it properly mm-hmm. and you 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 follow that you follow and you said trust i believe you know that's also hard i mean you know being remote parang LDR yan <laughs> long distance relationship ang hirap but i mean if somebody like you so all our viewers or listeners today who are based in somewhere else you know based in dubai abu dhabi uh, in saudi arabia australia wherever you are filipinos watching or listening kaya i mean this person mr francis here is proof of the pudding so if if you only put yourself, your heart, and your soul into it, you can actually do it. You can be an entrepreneur even outside of the Philippines managing businesses here back in the country. Um, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, also, just would like to add lang. Add lang dun sa ano. Um, you can also have a partner, a co- um, collaboration, di ba? A partner where nanado sa Pilipinas. You know, like, like oh. the, the Mercato United Kitchen, RJ and Edgar is there that um, uh, part of the board and the rest of the other board members who are going to be in that pool. So, so full proof siya. Hindi lang naman ako yung uh, nagpapalakad ng mga business. So, aside from dun sa organic mo, you, you also have a alter ego na nandoon, di ba? And people you trust and part of that board. Sorry to to add lang that. Yes, yes, yes. that's very good because if you're if you can't be there, galamay ang tawag nila, di ba? And so if you can't have the the galamay, people you trust, people who are also like you and you know also have a stake in that business. Parang yes. oh, pantay-pantay kayo. Um okay, so um Francis, we have new online entrepreneurs probably also corporate people who have side hustles and who are maybe thinking of uh, being time in their business what is one advice that you can give them this is this can be business a business advice a life advice 
ideas and marketing advice is up to you. What advice can you, if there's one thing that you can give them, what would it be? Um, ako, isa, isa sa, uh, if this didn't happen to me, I uh, will never be on the same, or bakit di mo in interview today? <laughs> uh, and, and, um, Always uh, challenge your status quo and unleash your full potential. If I may just um, cite that example, when I moved to Dubai, um, that time, to 2008, my boss called me. He's the general manager. Um, that time, I was the operational excellence manager responsible for Middle East and South Asia. And also, I was handling finance. You know, I do have the privilege to to see the other, um, I would say, the package of my colleagues. I'm the only one, the Asian, in in the management team. And the difference, uh, you know, we do have the same packages or grade, sorry, but the packages is so different. I mean, there, this, eto sila, eto ako. Oh. Yeah. So one time. Uh, after a month, me moving from Qatar to Dubai, my boss called me. Francis, can you come to my office? He was shouting around seven o'clock in the evening. So, so I went from my office. I went to his office. So hindi pa nakakapasok. So sabi niya sa akin, what's wrong with you? Okay. Okay. I think I'm going to pack my stuff and go back to the Philippines. So that's what is running. So sabi ko, ano bang nagawa kong mali? And then, why you Filipino are too shy? Sa loob-loob ko, racist. <laughs> <laughs> sa loob-loob ko, racist. So sabi niya sa akin, come, sit down. So I sat down in front of, uh, nasa table niya. And then, Francis, sabi niya sa akin, what's wrong with you? Okay, so, ano naman ginawa ko? Wala pa naman ako masyadong major decision. One month pa lang akong kakalipat ko sa promotion na ito. Then he said, um, you do have the privilege to compare your package from your colleagues. I don't care if they're senior. I don't care if they're, but your grading are all the same. You never even come back to me and ask me or challenge me. So I, I'm still stunned. You know, hindi ako nakapagsalita. And then at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the discussion, hindi pa rin ako nakapagsalita. That, that 10 minutes, meron ka maririnig na cricket sound. <laughs> so then he, he threw a folder in front of me, sabi na sa akin. Francis, that's your new package and this is the last time I'm going to fight for your worth. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... That's how I, um, you know me that I've been doing this, helping others also to to fight for their worth, you know. And and tayo mga Pilipino, mahiyain tayo. Um, pero napakatalenta do natin. And I owe I owe to that situation that I challenge myself and and go on the ranks on that corporate uh, um, to that company. And sabi ko, I need to do something. That's why um, I'm trying to help. You know, kaya nga sabi ko, lagi nga sabi, I find sharing success uh, very rewarding. It's a venue for me. Um, and uh, um, to give back to uh, as a social responsibility at the end of the day to create a legacy as well. Mm-hmm. Kaya ganun na lang ka, kalalim ng advocacy akong tumulong to challenge our kababayan. Kasi... To certain extent, we are at fault na uh, in ex- exploit natin ang sarili natin. Mm-hmm. We yet, don't have uh, the courage to challenge. Can you repeat that? I want to. I want you to repeat that. Because it na naputol siya, but it's very powerful, and I want people to hear it properly. Can you repeat? <laughs> Which that? Which one? Um, Send on. Yung the are Filipinos. Just a few. Rewind lang ng konte. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I mean, um, that's where my advocacy is coming from, you know, and it's a personal, uh, personal uh, touch sa buhay ko. Kaya I'm trying to give back. Na, kasi ang problema natin mga Pilipino, 
don't let's not blame the government let's not blame our culture it's us you know exploiting ourselves pumapayag tayo di ba tayo na nagbubukas ng kumpanya tayo nagsasara ng kumpanya ginagawa natin sobrang daming trabaho but um, never tayong challenge yung boss ng kapo eh kasi talentado tayo pero pagtalikod reklamo ka ng reklamo pagtalikod <laughs> <laughs> natin ano ba to lahat na lang ginawa ko bla 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 tapos hindi din na sweldo ko i mean and and it's a realization for me na kailangan natin may gawin if i'm going to touch if i'm going to empower individual and help transform the world why not hmm. Yeah. So save one soul at a time. Yan yun, yun, yun yung ano, naging mantra ko rin sa buhay. I, I, I was gonna ask you if there is one advice that you receive that you take with you even until now. But I think I got my answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you need to fight for your worth. Yes. We need, we need to fight for our worth and unleash our full potential. I would never be... Um, Francis Medina now if th- that incident didn't happen and and nakakatuwa i mean finding a mentor he's one of my mentor before he before i move out from the corporate world parang pantay na yung grade namin and still pag magpepresent ako sa executive board he still wants to see my presentation and challenge me <laughs> alam mo yon ganon ganon ka ano and and very rare yung mga ganyang klaseng tao yeah. and i i owe I owe everything to this uh, to this boss of mine and I'm still connected with him and hopefully to see him soon in this time. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you know, um, that's, I, I, I love this conversation that we had because it ended with a, and you know how big I am on stories. I love stories. And this story is powerful. It touches me so much because I was also an expat once upon a time for a year. I was an expat in Cambodia and I truly feel where you're coming from, where I know how they think of us. They think like they can only pay us this much because we're from a third world country. And if we yes. don't challenge them, if we are not brave enough to challenge the status quo, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen. And I love this advocacy of yours because you're an expat and you're an entrepreneur. And when you combine them together, it just becomes, you know, so impactful. So maraming maraming salamat, Francis, for for guesting on my show today. Um, I'm sure that many of our kababayans out there listening or watching from Dubai, from Australia, from the UK, from everywhere in the world, will learn a lot from this conversation. Maraming, maraming salamat sa iyo. Any last words for our viewers? No, I mean, keep keep chasing your dreams. And sama yung sinabi mo, not only chasing your dream, take action. <laughs> um, and collaborate with successful people. And the last thing is that we need to find our work. We need to unleash our full potential. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So for all our viewers, listeners today, thank you again for watching another episode of Changemakers with Valerie Fisher. Bye!